If I can't picture it, I can't understand it. Albert Einstein Welcome students. Till so far in this lecture series, we have studied uh, kinematics and kinetics of translational motion. In kinetics of translational motion, we have seen how to apply Newton's laws of motion, methods of work energy and methods of impulse and momentum on a particle as well as on a system of particles. While describing kinetics of system of particle, we have also encountered a beauty, very beautiful concept, the concept of mass center. And with the help of a center of mass frame, or frame of reference attached with the mass center, we have seen how beautifully we can analyze some of the systems, or means kinetics of some of the system of particles. From today, we start discussing rotational motion, and first we take kinematics of rotational motion, and today's talk will be based on how to visualize the kinematics of uh, rotation motion means nature and qualitative description. In today's talk, I will not involve any mathematical analysis. Actually, idea behind this uh, or devoting a lecture on qualitative description of rotation motion is that what I have seen, most of the students are not capable of visualizing the nature of rotation motion. Actually, in entire classical mechanics, the idea is Whatever we study, we make model of that in our mind and we try to reconcile the analysis with that model. So, to understand rotation motion completely, we must be able to make a model of the rotating body in our mind. For that, today's talk is this, uh, devoted on that. We describe every kind of rotation motion, what kind of rotation motion may have and try to make model of that, quality model and from the next class. Or next lecture, we try to analyze mathematically those models. Let us see first example here on the screen. You can see rolling wheel. The wheel is rotating and proceeding forward. Now it is rotating at one place. And here this wheel is translating without rotation. And you have seen here plus sign. So what is uh, rotation at one place and translation? When superimposed, we get rolling. Say again, rotation at one place, plus sign, translation without rotation. And summation of these two events or superposition of these two events is rolling motion. That is one of the example. And say another example. You might have seen such kind of tops, spinning tops. Actually see the nail. This nail is its central axis of symmetry. When the top rotates, what happens? This central axis of symmetry tilts from vertical and it sweeps a cone. The sweeping a cone by the central axis of symmetry is called precision. Actually, I am not going to detail, just I am giving you two instances and we try to analyze these uh, ideas qualitatively in detail. Rigid body. Before we proceed in rotation motion, actually when we talk about rotation, we always consider a rigid body. So what is a rigid body? A rigid body is an assembly of a large number of material particles mutual distances of which remain unchanged under all circumstances. In other words, a rigid body cannot be deformed in any circumstances. So whatever forces are applied, whatever circumstances is, rigid body is not deformed. Means it's any of the linear dimension will not change at all. So that is what we mean by rigid body. Actual material bodies are never perfectly rigid, but in circumstances where deformations produced are negligible as compared to the linear dimensions of a body, the body is assumed a rigid body or you can say the body can be assumed a rigid body. What does it mean? That uh, if uh, forces are large enough de if, and deformations are produced, that amount of deformation must be negligible as compared to corresponding linear dimension of the body. Or you can say in simple word, the deformation produced when are negligible, we assume the body as a fairly rigid body or you can say assume the body as a rigid body for all practical purposes. Motion of a rigid body. What we mean by motion of a rigid body? Actually, rigid body will not deform. So its motion can be detected only if the body changes its place or its orientation or both. Motion of a rigid body 
is detected or identified by change in either its location or in orientation or in both. So what is a change in location? Means body moves from one place to other place without change in orientation and this motion is called translational motion. And if the body changes its orientation without change in location, we can see it is only rotating. And if both things happen simultaneously, the body changes its location and changes its orientation, we can say that motion is a compound motion or translation and rotation simultaneously as we have seen rotation or uh, and plus translation of wheel and that resulted in rolling of a wheel. Change in location is known as uh, translational motion and change in orientation as rotational motion. So that idea is simple. How can we define translational motion and how can we define rotational motion? Simply, change in location is uh, translational motion and change in orientation is rotational motion. So first we discuss these motion one by one. Actually, translational motion we have discussed, but just what is the basic characteristics of translation motion we revise today because we have to see in what respect rotation motion is different than translation motion. So first we discuss a brief description of translational motion of rigid body. As we know, if a body is in only translation motion, all of its particles move identically. They move on identical paths at any instant of time. All of the particles have same velocities or equal velocity vectors, both in speed or magnitude as well as direction. Similarly, all of the particles will have equal acceleration vectors, whether the translation is on a straight line or any curved path. In translational motion, all the particles of a rigid body move in identical manner. That is, in any time interval, their paths are identical. And at any instant of time, their velocity vectors are equal and their acceleration vectors are equal. So please take care of that at any instant time, all the parts will have same velocity and same acceleration. And in any interval time, what path they will cover, paths of all the particles will be parallel as well as identical. Say here, in uh, this uh, reference frame, we are uh, depicting a rectangular plate. Here the corner P, corner C and this C the central point or if the plate is uniform, C will be mass center. So body uh, here, this plate at time T is here. Now on translation motion, let us see it moves and we have taken an arbitrary path and curvilinear translation. So at T plus delta T body reaches here. Now you can see this is the path of its mass center. And the corners P will also take the same path and corner Q will also take the same path. In the same fashion, you take any particle body, it will have same shape of path. So that kind of motion is translational motion. This is why translation motion of a rigid body can be represented by motion of any of its particle. This is idea we can use in kinematics. But in kinetics, this special particle becomes mass center of the body because by the law net actional force is equal to total mass of the body into acceleration of mass center. By this equation we can predict acceleration of mass center and if you know the boundary condition means velocity and position at any instant of time we can predict the entire motion of the body. In kinetics that is analyzing motion with the help of uh, Newton's laws methods of uh, work and energy or impulse and momentum. This spatial particle is the mass center of the body. Now, I will again explain what we mean by kinetics and what we mean by kinematics. In kinematics, we simply study how the motion is nature of motion. We never consider the causes of motion. But in kinematics, or sorry, in kinetics, we account for the causes of motion also and causes of motion are forces and energy or impulse. So that is what a brief description of a translation motion. Now we come again, elaborate qualitative description of rotation motion. Rotational motion of a rigid body. Change in orientation of a rigid body with time is known as rotation motion. 
So, what is the rotation motion? Change in orientation of a rigid body with time. Angles made with the coordinate axis by a straight line joining two suitable particles of the body provides a measure of its orientation or orientation of the body. So, in physics, any idea, if it is not made measurable, is of no use. So, we are talking about orientation. So, how can we make, uh, how can we measure orientation? To measure orientation, what we do? We connect any two suitable particles of a body. If I say suitable particles, means these two particles, the line joining these two particles must not be parallel to the axis of rotation. So, choose any two particles, line joining of which is not parallel to the axis of rotation. So, uh, angle made by this line with the coordinate axis is a measure of orientation and if the body rotates, this angle will change and we will say the body will rotate. A rigid body may rotate without translation motion or rotate with the translation motion that we have seen. Actually, uh, when a body rotates or rigid body, the rotation may be only rotation at one place and it may move from one place to other place simultaneously rotate. So, what we have seen? A rigid body may rotate without translation. So, it is rotating at one place and rotate with translation means it rotates as well as changes its location also. So, we discuss uh, these two both kinds of uh, situations. First, we take uh, rotation motion means here we are considering the body is rotating at one place. Again, for simplicity, we take uh, the same rectangular plate and we assume it to rotate about this uh, center point C, say this way. So, here we can see the mass center is not uh, changing its location. So, we can say the body has rotation only. It has no translation motion. Of course, what is the amount of translation motion? Recall, it is the total momentum of a system of particles. And rigid body is again a system of particles. What kind of system of particles? We can see. Rigid body means mutual distances of all the particles may not change. So, uh, for this system of particles, if there is any shift in center of mass, we can say it has translation motion. So, if I am saying that body has only rotation or you can say pure rotation, so translation motion of mass center must not be there. So, here this body has rotated. Now, we can uh, see here that uh, any linear dimension. Uh, any two points, we can say these two corner points, these two points and these two points. So, line joining these two points, this line and this line has turned through this angle. So, this is the angle of rotation. Now, we think about rotation without translation motion, sorry, rotation with translation. Now, we, what we consider? The body will rotate and simultaneously shift its location. Say here, now we can think See, you can see the center of mass is moving and the body is rotating also. So, here the body is at time t and here the body is time t plus delta t. Now, what we can think? We can join these two points uh, through C. So, that is a line and uh, we see the line again here. You can see the line has turned. And now, you see, this line is not parallel to the axis. X is here passing through C and perpendicular to plane of the figure. Actually, uh, X is a rotation. I suppose that you have slight idea. We define the X is rotation also very specifically. But at present, what idea you have in your mind, just with, uh, proceed with that one. So, you can see that uh, line is not parallel to axis because axis is perpendicular to the plane of figure. So, you can see that line has turned. So, we will see the orientation of body has changed. Now, we again reproduce this line here. So, here this angle. This is delta theta. This delta theta is angular displacement due to rotation of the body in time interval from t to t plus delta t. Now, we can see very important thing about delta theta. From wherever you measure this delta theta, wherever the origin of the coordinate system is, this delta theta will appear same. It will not change or it will not depends on the location of reference frame. So, what we can conclude? That the angular displacement and hence is derivative terms angular velocity and again derivative angular accelerations. These angular motion quantities, angular displacement, angular velocity, 
and angular acceleration due to rotation motion do not depend on choice of reference frame or you can say they are independent of reference frame. Later while discussing kinetics of rotation, we will see that uh, rotation motion is absolute. It will not depend on reference frame. For that, uh, you can think a thought experiment. Suppose we take a bucket of water and rotate the bucket. What we will observe? The water will rise at the boundaries of bucket and in the middle it will dip. So it will make a whole just a concave shape if you see from upward and this uh, concave shape is the result of rotation. Now suppose we are observing the bucket from a reference frame that is rotating with the bucket with the same angular velocity. Kinematically from that frame you will see the bucket is stationary but again you will observe the water will take the same frame and the frame that the water level will take the same shape the concave shape and this concave shape will appear the same as from the ground frame as well as from the rotating frame. So effect of rotation motion is independent of reference frame. So here it is a very important criteria that uh, rotation motion is absolute. It, is, it does not depend on reference frame. That's why to analyze rotational motion we have a flexibility that we can assume rotational axis wherever we desire. It is not necessary that we assume the actual rotation motion, rotational axis as the axis of analysis because it does not depend on reference frame. You can choose axis anywhere, wherever it is desired or wherever it is suitable. So here, the angle delta theta through which a linear dimension turns is the angular displacement of rotational motion. Again, we see here this. And this is line joining C from the origin. This is line joining C again origin. So these are the two position vectors of mass center at two instant. This is the position vector of mass center at time t, instant t. And this is the position vector of mass center at t plus delta t. Now see in the time interval, this position vector has turned. And this is again an angular displacement. And this angular displacement is because of translation of mass center or translation motion of the body. And uh, this angular displacement will depend on choice of origin. If you move origin here, suppose we take origin here, delta theta c will increase. Is it? Now, if you see, take origin on the line of this, uh, these two positions of c anywhere, you can see in that interval, delta theta is zero. If your uh, origin is here. Now, if it, it in between anywhere here, you can see delta theta is pi. So, delta theta c Angular displacement of mass center due to translation of mass center depends on choice of reference frame. So here that is a very peculiar dif uh, difference between angular motion quantities what we have learned in translation motion and angular motion quantities what we learn in rotation motion. Their formulas will be same, their mathematical definitions will be same, but their properties are entirely different. What the difference? The angular motion quantities of rotation motion are independent of frame reference. They do not depend on choice of origin. At the other hand, angular motion quantities due to translation of mass center depends on reference frame. See here, the angle delta theta c through which the position vector of the mass center rotates is the angular displacement due to translation motion of the body. So we have seen what is the meaning of these two things. See here, angular displacement delta theta of rotation motion is independent of reference frame. Whereas angular displacement delta theta c associated with the translational motion depends on reference frame. That is very important idea. So what we can say, a key, a key feature of angular displacement in rotation motion. That is key feature. Why we, we are calling key feature? Because here, the angular motion quantities due to rotation differ in property from angular motion quantities due to translation of mass center. Thus, angular velocity and angular acceleration of a rotation motion are also independent of a reference frame that we have seen. What is uh, again, what the idea is axis of rotation. I have seen earlier that uh, just I have described you that uh, access earlier, we have some idea in our mind. 
Now we will try to describe axis rotation. Actually, if you see, the body is rotating here in both the figure clockwise. So you will see the axis of rotation is passing through C and perpendicular plane of a figure. Why perpendicular plane of figure? Because if you think omega vector in both the cases, that is perpendicularly inward of the plane of figure. So what we can conclude that axis rotation is parallel to the line of angular velocity vector. One thing. And from here you will see that it should pass through mass center. But what we have seen earlier that in rotation motion, the angular motion quantities are independent of choice of origin. So we can assume axis anywhere. That's why while defining rotation axis, we will not see, we will not fix any criteria about its location. What we see? Only it is a mathematical line parallel to angular velocity vector. Axis of rotation is a mathematical line parallel to the line of angular velocity vector. It can be assumed anywhere as we desire or wherever it is suitable, we assume. It. Again, that is not final definition of uh, axis rotation. As we proceed further, we will redefine it or we refine it. We refine this definition more precisely. But at present, this uh, definition will fulfill our purpose. So that is what we have seen. What is rotation motion? and uh, two kinds of rotation motion, rotation without translation and rotation with translation. And uh, a key difference between angular motion quantities of rotation motion and angular motion quantities due to translation of mass center. And we also seen what should be definition of axis rotation. Of course, I have mentioned that we will refine this definition later on. Types of motion involving rotation. Please take care of it. We are not classifying types of rotation motion. We are classifying types of motion in which there is rotation. So what I have written here? Types of motion involving rotation. Motion of a rigid body involving rotation can be classified into following categories. Three categories. What they are? First one, rotation about a fixed axis. Here, we have seen the first uh, example on the previous scheme that the plate has rotated and center mass was stationary. Of course, it is not necessary that in this rotation axis passes or fixed axis passes through center mass. We will describe this motion uh, later, but uh, at present what you can see, it is rotation about a fixed axis. Axis is not moving. Second one, rotation about an axis in translational motion and that is ruling of a wheel. And in this kind of motion, what will happen? The axis will move from one place to other place and the body will rotate about that moving axis. And there is only translation of axis. And what can be third category? Rotation of a body about an axis in rotation. So that is third. Rotation about an axis in rotation. And it includes the example of spinning top. So uh, what is the idea further? We have to qualitatively describe all these three kinds of motions in moly rotation in detail. And the description today is will uh, be only qualitative description. So first we take rotation about a fixed axis. So here axis must be fixed. The axis may or may not pass through the mass center. So rotation of a ceiling fan, potter's wheel, opening and closing of a door of a building and needles of a wall clock etc. comes into this category. Why have taken needles of a wall clock? Because wall clock is fixed. So axis about which needles are moving is fixed. It is not moving. Here it is not the example of a wristwatch because wristwatch move with your hand. So axis about which needles are moving, it is movable. So here the three particular examples, rotation of a ceiling fan, rotation of a potter's wheel, opening and closing doors of a building. Again here, please uh, don't consider it is not doors of an atom moving automobile. It is doors of a building. So if you say door, it means door of a building. If we have to mention door of an automobile, so it will mention that we are mentioning, you know, we are talking about door of a moving car or moving bus or moving train. But if you say simply door, it means door of a building whose axis is fixed and needles of a wall clock. So first come here, say a ceiling fan is shown here. Now you can see this rod. This rod is stationary. It will not rotate. 
only this uh, central body and blades are rotating when the fan rotates. So what happens here? This uh, a mathematical line through this uh, rod and this rod is called axle. Please uh, no difference between axis and axle. Axle is a material body but axis is, is a mathematical line. So here a central line through the axle is called axis of rotation and it is fixed. Now the uh, fan rotates in this way. So if you see from top it appears anticlockwise and from if you see the bottom it will appear. You can see how the uh, from bottom the fan will appear in this way. It will appear clockwise or in this example. Now as the fan rotates what happens? All the particles of the fan which are not on this axis or on this rod or the fan means this uh, central body and blades. If you consider any other particle, all the particle will move on a circular path. Say how we can describe it. All the particles of a rotating fan move on circular paths about the central line through the stationary rod supporting the fan. The stationary axis of rotation is shown by dashed line here. So what you can see? All the particles of a rotating fan move on circular paths about a central line. This through the stationary rod. This is stationary rod which is supporting the fan. So we have seen that uh, this central line is the axis and the stationary axis of rotation is shown by dashed line here. So any particle say here. Circular path of a particle P is shown by a dashed circle. Say here this point P. And as the fan rotate, this uh, particle will follow the circular path. In this way, you can take any particle of the wheel, uh, fan. As the fan rotates, uh, all the particles of the fan will follow circular path. And centers of these circular paths will be on the axis of rotation. And axis rotation is not movable. So this kind of motion is called rotation about fixed axis. Similarly, we can say door. Now, here the door uh, hinges are fixed. So, door rotates about the hinges. So, the a line passing through the hinges is called axis of rotation. So, it is a mathematical line. Now, as the road, door rotates, uh, all the particle you can see will move on a circular path about this axis of rotation. A door rotates about a vertical line that passes through the or its hinges. This vertical line is the axis of rotation. In the figure, the axis of rotation is shown by a dashed line. See, you can see. As uh, what we can see further, it is not necessary that the stationary axis of rotation passes through the rotating body. Of course, here in these two examples, we see the axis of rotation passes through the body. We have taken the first example on the previous screen, rotation of the plate at one place. We have assumed the axis to pass through mass center. Again, you can see the axis passes through mass center. But here axis is not passing through mass center of the door. But in all these three examples, the axis passes through the body. But it is not necessary that in fixed axis rotation, axis passes through the body. See this example. Here we have a disc and the disc is rotating. And this cube is placed here. And suppose if cube is not slipping, it will rotate in this way. Now for the rotation of this cube, this is what fixed axis and you can see this axis is not passing through the cube. So it is not necessary that in fixed axis rotation, axis passes through the body. Of course, in most of cases in fixed axis rotation, axis passes through the body, but it may not pass through the body. The stationary axis of rotation passes through the disc, but not through the cube. That is what very distinct example. Now, here this motion of the cube on this circular path is not a revolution motion. And as you can see, the cube rotates, the cube revolve about on this orbit, it will rotate about also. So you can see if the cube is fixed on this uh, disc, uh, the face, face facing the axis will always be toward the axis. So in one complete revolution, the cube will complete one rotation about vertical axis also. So what we can see here, the curvilinear translation of the cube is known as revolution. And you can see uh, revolution of the earth about the sun. Here as the earth revolves about the sun, 
it rotates about its axis also. But uh, here uh, in earth example, the period of rotation and period of revolution are different. But in this cube example, period of revolution and period of rotation through which the cube will rotate through one degree are same. Same as in case of moon. Actually, the moon's uh, rotation about its own axis and its revolution period are equal. That's why uh, the same face of moon is always towards Earth. And the same case is here. You can see uh, this face of cube is toward axis. So at all time, this face will be towards the axis. So we have seen here and uh, that is a rotation about fixed axis and a very special kind of thing that uh, in fixed axis rotation, it is not necessary that axis of rotation must uh, pass through the body. It may not pass through the body. If the axis of rotation is not passing through the body, the translation of mass center on a circular path or curvilinear path is known as revolution of the body or revolution motion. Now we see the general description of fixed axis rotation. General description means we try to find some very peculiar observations. What they are, let us see. We'll uh, consider a rigid body here and this axis passing through this rigid body, PQ, and we assume this axis to be fixed and direction of motion uh, rotation is this way. And of course, we say it is direction of rotation. Actually, it is not direction of rotation, it is sense of rotation. In mathematics or physical science, direction is a quantity and it can be represented or it must be represented by straight line. But here, it is a curved line. So this is called sense. And you know that we have seen in circular motion that for this angular displacement or for this rotation, you by right hand rule, you can assign a vector upward direction. So that will be direction of rotation upward. But it is what? sense of rotation but uh, in common language this is called direction so if you see it uh, we can see if you see from top it will appear anticlockwise so we can say the sense of rotation from top is anticlockwise but uh, commonly it is also called direction of rotation is anticlockwise but uh, we must be very much specific about the terms we call it sense of rotation now consider few particles say particle a as the body rotate, this particle will follow this circle and radius of the circle this one and center of this circle is again on the axis of rotation. Say for particle B, we have taken particle B in the same plane, means the plane of circle of A and plane of circle of B are coplanar. And again you can see, both these circles are perpendicular to rotational axis. We can see another particle C. And C is what, again at the same radius as A is, one thing is what? line joining A and C is parallel to the axis of rotation. We say under particle D, we have taken this particle D here, the radius is somewhat different. Now we can see, as the body rotates, this line AC will remain always vertical, it will not change in orientation. That's why I have mentioned earlier, that is uh, how to define orientation. Select two suitable points and the line joining them, what angles it makes with the coordinate axis, that is measure of orientation. And what I have said earlier, suitable point means the line joining the two points must not be parallel to axis of rotation. Because if you choose such two points, uh, this line will not appear rotating. So uh, while choosing this way, what you take any points, but uh, line joining them must not be parallel to the axis of rotation. See here, all the particles not on the axis of rotation move on circular paths with centers on the axis of rotation. All these circular paths are in parallel planes that are perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Consider the particles A, B, C and D. Means uh, uh, what I have told you here, all the particles which are not on the axis of rotation. As the body rotates, they will follow circular paths. And planes of all these circular paths is perpendicular to axis of rotation. Center of all these circular paths is on the axis of rotation. One more thing, all these particles will move with the same angular velocity and the same angular acceleration. Let us see how. All the particles of the body cover same angular displacement in the same time interval. Therefore, all of them move with the same angular velocity 
and angular acceleration. That idea is quite simple. You can see as the body rotates in any time interval, angular displacement of all the red eye of B, A, C and D will be the same. So we can say that is also angular displacement of the body. So in fixed axis rotation or in rotation you can say that is uh, all the particles uh, will move on circular paths with the same angular velocity and acceleration and these angular velocities and accelerations are equal to that of rotation of the body. And we will see it later. We'll, again, we we'll take a more elaborate discussion of that. Angular velocity and angular accelerations of a circular motion of all the particles are equal to that of the rotation of the body. How we can understand it? Suppose we take the particle A, say particle B, and under particle we take here, this, or that point. Now, as the body rotates, the rotation of this line will be same as rotation of this line. And rotation of this line is what? Angular velocity of, uh, or angular motion quantity of circular motion of B. And angular motion quantity of this line will be what? That of rotation of the body. Because how we define rotation? That join any two particles which are not parallel to the rotation axis. And rotation of the line joining them will represent rotation of the body. So we can say angular displacement, angular velocity and angular acceleration. Collectively what we can say? Angular motion quantities of circular motion of all the particles are the same as angular motion quantities of rotation of the body. That is very important idea. No two particles in a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation can have equal velocity vectors and acceleration vectors. Consider the particles A and B. Now what we can say? We can say two particles, any two particles which are in the same plane and that plane is perpendicular to axis rotation. Any two such particles cannot have same velocity vectors and same acceleration vectors. Of course, they may have same speeds. They may have same acceleration magnitude, but not direction. Say here, uh, you can consider uh, any particle on this circle. Of course, all these particles will have same speed as that of A, but their direction will be different. And if you change the circle, their magnitude will be different. So in this way, what we can say? No two particles in a plane perpendicular to axis rotation can have equal velocity vectors and acceleration vectors as particles A and B. Particles on the line parallel to the axis of rotation have equal velocity and acceleration vectors. Consider the particles A and C. What is that? All particles which are on a line that is parallel to axis of rotation will have equal velocities and equal accelerations. Say particle A and C because line AC will not rotate during the rotation of the body. So what we can conclude further? Two particles in a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation move on circular paths related to each other. Radius of the circular path is the distance between the particles. In addition, angular velocity and angular acceleration are those of rotation motion of the body. I am again repeating this sentence. That is two particles in a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation on circular path related to each other. So let us see here. Two particles in a plane perpendicular to axis of rotation in a plane. Say we can consider particle A and B. That is uh, move on circular path related to each other because velocity of uh, any two particles will not be the same. Again, their distance is fixed. So, if velocities of any two particles are not equal, but their distance will not change. So, what we can see, it is an idea of very common fact that each particle will appear moving on a circular path to other particle. And what will be radius of the circular path? The distance between the two particles. And what will be angular velocity of the circular motion? Angular velocity of rotation of the body. What will be angular acceleration of the circular motion? Angular acceleration of the rotation of the body. So, if you join the line AB. See, what we can say? Two particle A, B will appear on a circular path of radius AB. 
with the same omega as that of body, with the same alpha as that of body. Similarly, or to B, A will appear moving on a circular path on the radius AB with the same omega as that of the body, with the same alpha as that of the body. So that is again very remarkable fact and it will be greatly used while analyzing uh, motion or rotation of a body about an axis in translation. So all these ideas, of course, they will be useful in analyzing rotation of a body about fixed axis, but they are characteristic of rotation. So they will be greatly used or very efficiently used in analyzing the rotation about a body uh, about uh, of a body about an axis in translation. Consider the particles A and B. They move on a circular path of radius AB with respect to each other with the angular velocity and acceleration of line AB, hence of rotation of the body. That is uh, again, no need uh, any further description or explanation. So, so these are the what uh, very peculiar or important properties of a rotation about fixed axis. And what I had told you earlier that we had to make a model. So what the description I have taken here, and you must make a model of that description. Because while analyzing rotation motion or rotation motion uh, questions or problems, these models will help you. And I will say only these models will help you. Actually, uh, I have interacted so many students. Of course, students know all the formulas, but they face difficulty in analyzing rotation motion. So difficulty arises because of what? They are not able to visualize. Visualize means they are not able to make exact model of the motion. So, these ideas will help you to make exact model of the things. Again, uh, knowing all these points in analyzing some problem, uh, any of these points or all the points may be of importance. So, please uh, take care of all these things. Now, we come on second kind of uh, rotation motion that is a rotation about an axis in translation. So, that is what a type of motion involving rotation. Here, that is, uh, we have seen example of a rolling of a wheel. So we can classify it or define it. If a body is in rotation about an axis in translation, the body rotates about an axis and axis moves without rotation. So just specific here, that is the body rotates about an axis and axis move from one place to other place without rotation. So there must be only translation motion of the axis. So that is what this kind of motion. Rotation about an axis in translation includes a broad category of motions. Rolling of a wheel is a typical example of this kind of motion. So, rolling is what? Very common example of this kind of. So, we will try to understand this kind of motion with the example or qualitative analysis of rolling motion. Consider a rolling wheel of a vehicle moving on a straight level road. So here the vehicle is not on a turn, it is moving on a straight level tra track. You can visualize as the vehicle is on a turn, its axle rotates. So at the same time, it uh, axle rotation of the wheel will rotate. So we are considering a vehicle moving on a straight level track. So here this way, uh, this diagram is static, we can see this wheel and that is what uh, sense of rotation we have seen it clockwise and that is what how the center mass or center proceeds so if you superimpose these two motion what will be the wheel rotate and proceed forward so that is what rolling motion related to the reference frame of the vehicle the wheel appears rotating about its stationary axle containing the axis of rotation thus the wheel in this frame appears in rotation about a fixed axis. That is again very important idea. Actually consider a reference frame which is attached with the vehicle. In that reference frame, axle connecting both the wheels is a fixed axle. So axis is what? Central line of that axis or this axis is fixed and wheel will appear rotating about this fixed axis. So in this frame, what will uh, observe? It is a fixed axis rotation. Now consider another frame, the ground frame. From the ground frame, the axle or axis will appear in translation motion in this way. Related to a reference frame fixed with the ground, 
the axis appears moving with the vehicle and the wheel rotating about the moving axis. Therefore, rolling of a wheel is superposition of two simultaneous motions. What? Translation of the axis with the vehicle and rotation of the wheel about the axis. So, what we can say? Uh, in the frame reference of vehicle, the wheel appears in a state of uh, rotation about fixed axis and in the frame of reference of ground, the axis appear rotating. So, what will be resulting motion of the wheel? Superposition of these two simultaneous but distinct motion. Distinct means they are different kind of motion. What are the two distinct motion? That is rotation of wheel about its axis and translation of axis. If we superimpose these two motion, what we observe rolling and that we have seen on the introductory screen. What? And uh, first side you see the wheel rotating at one place, then wheel translating without, without rotation and plus of these two motion. Superposition is what? Rolling of the wheel. So that is a very remarkable idea in uh, analyzing rotation motion and this idea is also known as Chessel's theorem. So we will describe it uh, and uh, we uh, describe it again and we consider or we um, see how it will be helpful in analyzing such kind of motion in the next lecture when we take a mathematical description of kinematics of rotation motion. Say here we take another example. Now, what we are considering a cylinder in place of wheel. This cylinder is rolling on this xy plane. As a similar example, consider a cylinder rolling on the xy plane. Now, consider motion of the point P, say here. Now, you can visualize how the P will appear. So, P will appear moving this way, that way, like that, this way. So, here uh, we can assume here a plane. One thing, if the V, the cylinder rotates, uh, move further and axis will not rotate, you can see this point P will always remain this plane A, B, C, D. It can not move in this way, only it can proceed in this way. So, the point P will remain in a plane and that plane is perpendicular to the axis of rotation. So, you can see here, uh, that can be trajectory of the particle P. Here, we have assumed that uh, the, uh, we, the cylinder is not slipping while rotating. Of course, why this category uh, trajectory will be, we will discuss in the later lecture and we will deduce this trajectory mathematically also. So, what we can conclude from here, the point P of the cylinder always remaining in a plane ABCD is in circular motion about the central axis of the cylinder and appears moving on a cycloidal path related to reference frame represented by the coordinate axis. So, what you can say? The point P of the cylinder always remaining in plane ABCD is in circular motion about the central axis. If you see from the from a reference frame fixed with the axis, we will see this P will rotate here in this way. Now, from the ground, this axis will translate in this way. So, what is resulting motion? Rolling. And what is resulting motion of the point P? Suppose from the reference from axis, you can see the P must have moving on the circular path in this way. But because of translation, the P will appear moving this way and such kind of trajectory are called cycloids. So, cycloids is a family of curve which represents trajectory of any particle of a rolling wheel. Rolling means any particle which is in uh, any wheel which is in uh, rotation about axis in translation. So, trajectory of uh, such kind of any particle of a body in such kind of motion is called cycloid. Now, this is what uh, some uh, qualitative description of uh, this kind of motion. Now, as we have seen some re remarkable properties about uh, rotation uh, for rotation about fixed axis that uh, uh, that uh, no two particles in a plane perpendicular axis uh, will have same velocity vector. That property I am taking for example, such kind of peculiar properties will try to extract for this kind of motion also. So, what you say? General description of rotation about axis in translation. So, in this what we take, we try to find some important properties of such kind of motion. First, every particle of the body always remains in a plane perpendicular to the axis of rotation. Therefore, 
this kind of motion is also known as general plane motion. So that is very important idea. Actually, uh, we have seen that uh, the particle P was always in the plane A, B, C, D. So this kind of motion is also called general plane motion. Second point, any two particles in a plane perpendicular to the axis of rot rotation move on a circular path with respect to the each other. Radius of the circular path is equal to the distance between the particles and angular velocity and angular acceleration are equal to those of the rotation of the body. So this property is same as it was in fixed axis rotation. What we can say? If we consider any plane perpendicular to axis of rotation, any two particles in this plane will appear to each other moving on a circular path. Radius, radius of the circular path will be equal to distance between the particles. Angular velocity of this circular motion will be equal to angular velocity of rotation of the body. Angular acceleration of this circular motion will be equal to angular acceleration of rotation of the body. So that is this property is same as it was in fixed axis rotation and again will play very vital role in analyzing any kind of rotation motion. Rotation about axis in translation can be conceived as superposition of two simultaneous motions. What they are? Translation motion of the axis and rotation about the axis. So we have seen earlier that uh, as uh, for rolling wheel, we can consider that it is superposition of two simultaneous motion. One was rotation of the wheel about axis and translation of axis. So these two things, property number two and property number three, will make very basic idea in analyzing the rotation of this kind means rotation of a body about an axis in translation. Now we consider third category of motion, rotation about an axis in rotation. In this kind of motion, the body rotates about an axis that also rotates about some other axis. So this kind of motion is what? Um, rotation of a body about an axis and that axis is also rotating. That axis is neither fixed nor translate. What? It rotates. Spinning top was a very typical example of that. A rotating top is a typical example of uh, this kind of or this category of motion. Say here in diagram, you can see that is a spring top. Uh, you can see here that the top is spinning about this central axis symmetry, this one. And as the top rotates, what you can see that rotation about axis symmetry, as the top rotates, this axis will sweep a cone. And this sweeping cone, this kind of motion is called precision of the axis. Sometimes you can see this axis will go like that in this way. Sometimes if the top is quite unbalanced. So this kind of uh, this kind of this motion is called nutation. So we are not going into detail of that because uh, detailed analysis of this kind of motion is not in the scope of the JE syllabus, even in physics Olympiad. Only sometimes problem has been asked on this kind of motion that what the qualitative idea we have made here and what kind of result we can extract from this qualitative idea. Such problem can be uh, in the scope of J. So the, that's why I have described this motion here. Now here, let us see. The top rotates about the central axis of symmetry. And this axis sweeps a cone about a vertical axis. Just see. This axis sweeps a cone about this vertical axis. What? The central axis continuously changes its orientation. Therefore, is in rotation motion. This type of rotation of the axis is known as precision. You can see this axis, central axis symmetry, continuously changes our, our orientation. It will be here, sometime it will be here, sometime it will be here, sometime it will be here. So you can see it continuously changing its orientation. So we will see that uh, this uh, central axis of symmetry is in rotation. So this is what an example of rotation of a body about rotating axis. Another example you can think, say a swinging table fan. Actually, you have seen a table fan and the blades of table fan rotates about its uh, central axle. And when the table fan swings, uh, what happens? The central axis rotates about a vertical axis. So 
swing of a rotating table fan is again example of this kind of motion. Rotation of a wheel, of a vehicle, when it is executing a turn is again example of this kind of motion. And a very common example, if you roll a coin and just after the covering few centimeters, the coin tilts and it will start circling, circling, circling. This kind of motion is again example of this kind of motion. So, in due course of motion, we will try to take advantage of the imagination idea what we have made at present. Actually, these models, these ideas will try to make a qualitative model of every situation in your mind. And what we do in uh, further while developing any article or solving a problem, we first make a qualitative model and we try to analyze that qualitative model on the line of these observations what we have taken. Only thing is what? We have to uh, express these observations in terms of mathematical language. So, for today, I will conclude at this time. In the next class, we will meet and discuss about uh, mathematical analysis of kinematics of rotation motion. Thanks for patient listening. We will meet in the next class. I am never content until I have conceived a model of what I am studying. If I succeed in making one, I understand. Otherwise, I do not. Sir Lord Calvin, 1891